I have slowed down. I've just slowed down my video rate in general, but I've slowed down my rate in uh, prop videos, uh, mainly because there, there are so many good props these days that you really just need to try a bunch, and they're not like they're expensive items. Just try them and see which one you like. And uh, because we have so many good props that I, I have personally lost interest. And something that's pretty interesting at this point is that each one of these companies, uh, HQ, Doll, Gemfan, and Azure, which are the big prop companies in our industry, each of these companies have their own simulation software and have tweaked things and written their own code for things. And they use the same prop science across the different products. And sometimes they'll make a totally new, new product and totally different prop science. And so things will change then. But for the most part, if you like a prop from one company, it's probably more likely that you'll like another prop from that same company. And so for me, that company is Gemfan. I think they've been doing a great job on their prop science as of late. Their 51466 that came out was, I think, the first one in this new kind of prop science that they were working on. And I love that prop. And when the 51433 came out, that immediately took the place of the 51466 to me. If I was a racer, I'd still use the 51466. My sticker still comes in that bag. And it's fantastic. It's so efficient at speed, it's just efficient in general. And it's just, it's a great feeling prop in the air to me. The 51433 just has a better response in that prop. And it has a softer low end on the throttle because it's just a shallower blade. And it's, it's just feels fantastic. So I really, really appreciate this prop a lot. But it doesn't mean that other props from other companies are bad. It's just entirely a personal preference. So folding blades. The reason why I'm very excited about folding blades is because they're new. They're genuinely new, new genuinely different. And uh, something that was kind of unfortunate is that the video that I made about the doll folding blade here on the left, I was surprised by the number of negative comments that were on that video. And most of them read, folding blades are nothing new. What are you trying to pitch here? I am very aware that folding blades are nothing new. I mean, they've been around in every other industry. What's special here, which is kind of surprising that people aren't recognizing is that we don't have folding blades in the mini quad industry where we need props that perform for our need. I mean, you can't run a helicopter blade on a mini quad. Sure, there have been mini quads that have a collective pitch, but it's just not popular. It's just not the thing that happens in our industry. So what is special about these folding blades is that they fold and we don't have folding blades for performance mini quad FPV quads. So that is what's special. I know that there's nothing new about folding blades. In that same breath, I would say that in the description below, as well as the previous description, there are there is a list of potential advantages to folding blades that I have been accruing from talking to a lot of people. And I don't know if they're all here. I, I, I don't really care about the list, but I just put it there just you know to have a list. But the one that matters most to me is probably the most insignificant but also significant at the same time when you look at a quad that has folding blades on it that thing is just tiny and this is a five inch quad five inch props are not that big when you get up to six seven inches this becomes even more helpful i mean this is it's so nice to be able to just throw your quad in the bag and go and the other potential advantage which is not a potential it's definitely founded advantage i've already seen the advantage myself is that if you do happen to get stuck in a tree your blades will just fold out of the way. So when you turtle or just try to get your quad out of the tree, you can actually shake the darn thing out of the tree. And that has been really nice. It's happened to me twice already. And I'm so thankful for not having to drive home, get my big stick and go here and swack the damn tree to get it out. So it's our battle against trees that keep jumping in front of us. All right. So folding props. When I first started testing the folding props from, uh, I think, the Hel Heli Direct or somewhere, had a five-inch folding prop that had a pretty meaty bull nose blade on it and it was pretty heavy. And um, I tested and I was surprised at how responsive it was for how meaty and unaerodynamic the blade was. And so a couple of people pointed out that that is probably because that the folding blades have a heli effect, which is a leading and a lagging edge, which means that as the blade spins, the approaching blade will actually swing out and spin faster, and the trailing blade that's spinning back will kind of swing back. And what this does is apparently it self-balances the prop. I really have no idea how this impacts flight performance for our industry or really any other industry. I do know that helicopters actually wouldn't be able to fly without the ability for the blades to individually move on themselves. So I can definitely appreciate that, but I am not an engineer and I just, 
I don't care that much, <laughs> but I'm interested to know if anybody would like to discuss more about how that works to play into our potential industry here. So when I first started testing them, I actually first took, I always take my ideas to HQ first because HQ has been around the industry as long as anyone. I think Gemfan is probably the oldest prop manufacturer in our industry, but um, Zhang just has a good relationship with all of the most well-known pilots and we, they tend to trust them. So I take my ideas to him and he is also tends, tends to not be afraid of trying totally new off the wall things. And uh, I've taken my past several ideas to him, which he just hasn't implemented at all. I'm nothing against him. It's totally cool. He doesn't have to do anything for me. So moving forward, let's compare and contrast the differences between the doll blade and the gem fan blade. So the doll blade here on the right is very obviously going to look smaller and it has a steeper fold angle than the blade on the left. And what's really interesting to me here is that I gave these companies the same feedback and I don't know if they took any of my feedback, they didn't have to, but generally I thought that folding blades seems like a good idea. It's a nice direction to move in and they're like, yeah, we got nothing else to do. Let's <laughs> give it a shot because hey, we could make more props. So the fold angle is one thing that I said that probably maybe 75 degrees is going to be enough because I didn't want to make the blades so short and I mean smaller hubs are going to be lighter so hey that's my arbitrary number that I came up with 67 60 to 75 degrees seems like a good number to me and now what's really interesting is that what we found on the doll blade and many people have pointed out is that when you do hit stuff the blades tend to run into each other and we get kind of denting on the trailing edge of the blade which really doesn't impact flight performance or anything at all it's just unfortunate to look at and we came from an industry where our props would explode if we looked at them funny and now we're complaining about dents in our trailing edge so <laughs> we've come a long way uh, doll has made the biggest progression in that front because they're the first ones to start making the indestructible blades or the blades that just were made of polycarbonate so that they just wouldn't break as easily so the um the gem fan folding blade has a wider or broader fold angle so maybe that will happen less on it also, the blades themselves are not as floppy. They, they, they don't just like swing out just loosely. So that might mean that it has less of a helicopter effect. I don't know, or a heli effect. But it also may mean that the props don't just like jitter on themselves and run into each other because there is less play in the blade. Like the doll blades, they do definitely have some up and down play, some back and forth play. There's definitely some play to these blades. This blade has no play to it, even if the hub isn't fully together, which I'll talk about the hub in a second. But if you take just two blades, you can kind of cross them. So maybe they will run into each other when you hit things. I don't know. I haven't really experimented with that yet. But overall, it's I haven't had any issues. I haven't, I haven't crashed any of them at all. Uh, the other things about these two props, the flight performance, or let's talk about the physical first. So the, the hub on the doll, it doesn't come apart very easily. You kind of have to pry it apart. You pretty much ruin the hub if you try to get it apart. And uh, when you do get it apart... I'll just take this part for you. So the gem fan hub is really easy to get apart, which is super nice, super duper nice. And that's one of the potential advantages of having folding blades is that you can just replace a blade. So the next very logical question is, do the gem fan or the doll blades fit on the gem fan hub? And that's a big no-no, unfortunately. So they're just different sizes. And also what you may notice is that there is more plastic in the pin that is holding the doll blades on now i haven't heard anybody actually cracking the blade out off the pin but hey i could see it potentially happening on the gem fan blade which could be a very bad flaw in the gem fan prop i don't know maybe maybe not we got a lot more testing to go in this particular particular folding department to be able to tell anything about these props also something else that i'd like to point out right here is that the doll blade doesn't have as much plastic in the center portion as the doll blade as the gem fan blade you can see it's got this big triangle of plastic in the middle i don't really know why it's got that big thick triangle of plastic in the middle and so now let's go over the performance differences of these two props because there is a pretty stark performance difference between these two not stark they both still fly they're both still good but if you compare them side by side, like I have, like I do everything, you can tell some very obvious differences. So first and foremost, the doll blade compared to a traditional static blade is gonna be a little bit less efficient, a little bit less powerful, and a little bit less speed overall. And it's kind of straddling that borderline between, do I really want to give up those things, just a little bit in these departments to be able to have the convenience and ability to fall out of trees with a folding blade? 
maybe, maybe not. The gem fan blade has that potential hub issue where the pins might break. Probably not likely, but it's a possibility. And um, it unfortunately weighs more. But it doesn't have the problem of efficiency is great, perfect. It's as good as the 51433. I haven't found anything. Actually, might be better than the 51433. And the power is definitely there. It's definitely more powerful than the doll version or the doll folding prop. And the uh, speed is also higher than the doll version. So it, it's got all that stuff back to it. Maybe that's a result of the smaller hub because if you do take a look at the hub size, the gem fan hub is about 1.5 millimeters shorter, which is what's giving it the wider folding angle as well than the doll blade. So that's nice. And also the doll blade, I think as a result of the steep folding angle, they had to kind of f curve in the, the airfoil design here earlier in the blade like steep like closer to the hub which is probably giving it even worse efficiency whereas the gem fan blade it kind of starts almost at the same place as a traditional prop like there's almost no loss in actual functioning prop in the gem fan variant which i wouldn't expect the hub area to be such a significant thing but maybe it is actually contributing to the efficiency of the blade so these two of these two the Gem fan blade will be a little bit more efficient, a little bit more powerful, a little bit faster, and it unfortunately is going to be less responsive. So the gem fan blade is 4.7 grams, 4.7, 4.8 grams, which is a full gram more than the 51433, which does make it less responsive. It's about on par to almost a little bit less responsive than the 51433. It's in the same ballpark. So... Maybe it's okay. It's just annoying to have a have a folding prop that could weigh like weighs so much more when the doll folding blade is 4.3 grams, which I don't feel any difference in response or anything in terms of actual control input control feel from the weight of the blade with respect to the actual weight of the blade. As in, I don't feel a difference in any kind of response when I compare the doll blade to the my 51433 or any other static blade. But with the gem fan variant, I can actually feel just the just slightest bit of dullness when I do give it control inputs. That's not a bad thing in a lot of ways. That's actually helpful to some people. But in my opinion, I think the lightest, fastest responding, most aerodynamic prop is going to be more beneficial in general, overall, for everything. Smoothness and all things, everything mini quad. Because that is how we fly these things. That's how these things perform. So before leaving you, I will also show you that there is a six inch variant of this prop that already exists. None of, neither one of these are available yet. Maybe they'll be available uh, by the time you're actually watching this video. We are getting a small batch of uh, tester props from GemFan. It's going to be available on, on FPV Cycle. There's a six inch version for the doll blade as well. There's also a seven inch version of the doll blade. The weight of the six inch GemFan as well as the six inch doll is... 6.1 grams for the gem fan and 5.6 grams for the doll. So there is kind of a steep weight difference between the two. And you can definitely see it in the, I mean, the blade is just so much chunkier on the gem fan. So one direction I would obviously like to see gem fan improve in is the weight of the blade and the, the just the overall weight of the prop. I really actually like the performance. I just really want my response back. And I think it might be a touch touch more powerful than I want it to be on the low end of the throttle. Now, the main reason why I waited so long to show the flight video is that this quad that I was been testing it on, this is actually the quad that I fly the most these days because it, it's just my test quad and I test everything on it now. It's got some real wonky things going on with the motor. Like, there's a lot going on with this quad, but it is the quad that I fly the most right now. And it's just because I'm testing so many new things on this quad. But I can definitely feel out the quad and the props easier on this one because it is the one that I fly the most. But I'm constantly playing with firmware, constantly playing with different ESC boards and whatnot. And um, the motors that are on this quad are very prototype, very experimental. There's things going on inside these motors that don't exist in the industry at all, they exist in other industries. I have been experimenting quite a bit with various motor styles, various motor types, and kind of turning my whole motor science inside out upside down and I'm gonna have videos on that in the future as well 
But this video is with the gem fan folding prop, and uh, this is also the Cineglide frame, which is not really made for super crazy acro. It's made more for cruising and cinematic footage, and it's just such a it's just so pleasant to cruise with this quad because it's just such a nice cruiser. Anyways, I'm gonna leave you to watching this flight video if you want to continue watching it. But overall, thanks for watching Foster Teeth. It's very important, and stay tuned for a lot of. I'm hoping to kind of make the content that I have on my channel a lot more fun, a lot more entertaining. It, it just has been so busy lately that I haven't been able to do anything and there are a number of videos that I've been so backlogged on and I apologize to Real Steady Go and a couple other people that I told them I'd make videos and things, I just don't have the time at the moment, but I'm going to be mentioning it more and more. So take care, floss your teeth, bye.